Hello there, we are glad to welcome you back to our channel. In the wild world of the woods, one is either predator or prey, as the animals have to fight for their survival daily. Some animals like deer become an easy target for their attacker as they don't have a strong defense mechanism to protect themselves. But there are some lucky ones whom nature has bestowed extraordinary defense mechanisms to fight off their attackers. In today's video, we will be talking about one such lucky animal, that is the electric eel, which can give a fatal electric shock to its attacker, including the ferocious alligator. So without further delay, let's begin. What happens when an alligator tries to attack an electric eel? If you have ever received an accidental shock in your life, say at your home or office, we are sure you'll agree with us that even a momentary encounter is enough to send chills down your spine. Now, imagine what 860 volts will feel like. It can surely cause great damage or even death. So if an Amazon caiman, the equivalent of an alligator, tries to take a bite of the electric force, volti, which produces 860 volts of electric current, the alligator will surely die a painful death as seen here. The name electric eel is misleading, as in reality it is not an eel, but a South American species of knife fish. Though it is closely related to catfish or carp, it resembles an eel more because of its elongated and snake-like appearance. It can grow up to 8 feet long, weigh around 44 pounds, and can generate around 600 to 860 volts of electricity. For a long time, scientists believed that there existed only one species of an electric eel, but in the year 2019, three different species of electric eel were discovered using DNA analysis. These species are Electrosis volti, Electrophorus electricus, and Electrosis varley, found in the Brazilian Shield, Guinea Shield, and Lowland Amazon Basin, respectively. How do electric eels produce electricity? Electric eels have three electric organs, which make up about 80% of their body. They are the main organ, the hunter's organ, and the sac's organ. All of these three organs consist of dish-shaped cells called electrocytes that produce electricity. As the main organ and hunter's organ work together, they generate the strongest electrical discharge to defend themselves from their attackers. The sac's organ produces lower voltage electrical charge and is mainly used for navigation and communication. It has been found by scientists that the strongest high voltage charges, i.e. 860 volts, are produced by electric forest voltai species. The other two species, Electric Forest Electricus and Electris Varley, can produce up to 480 volts and 572 volts of electricity, respectively. How does an electric eel attack? In 1800, Alexander von Humboldt, a German biologist and explorer, visited the Amazon basin. When he asked the local villagers to capture the electric eel for his research, they took horses with them. As per Humboldt's documentation of the event, two horses were shocked to death as the electric eels leaped out of the water and attacked them. For the next 200 years, nobody believed Humboldt's findings until the year 2016. Kenneth Cantia, the biologist from Vanderbilt University, experimented using a plastic arm and a plastic crocodile head to check the attacking pattern of the electric eels and found that Humboldt's claims were true. In the case of humans, it has been found that the electric eel presses its lower jaws against an arm, leg, or even the chest. While doing so, it generates an intense burst of high voltage electricity, with the resulting jolt incapacitating the humans and leading to their death by drowning. Now, you must be wondering, why do electric eels attack like that? Well, they do so to cause the maximum damage to their attackers. When electric eels underwater, the current is distributed throughout the surrounding water, making the shock weaker. But when it leaps out of the water and attacks, the shock is stronger as the current enters the target's body directly before traveling through the submerged body parts. Well, good for us that we know this. God save the other animal predators. Now, another interesting thing about the electric eels is the fact that they are air breathers. Yes, they can breathe air and they have to do so for their survival in their low oxygen habitat, that is the murky streams. The surrounding muddy water proves only 20% of the oxygen. For the remaining 80%, they have to come to the surface every 10 to 15 minutes. And how is that possible? The mouth of the electric eels has many folds which help in increasing the surface area and a mucous membrane that absorbs the oxygen from the air. No wonder alligators don't go anywhere near electric eels. Can you think of any animal willing to take on the electric eel? Comment below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe for our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.